All right, producer Amber is, is going through it this week for good reason. That's for sure. Yes. Um, ugh. It is, <laughs> you know, it has been a year since my mom. Oh, ugh. Uh, it's been a year since my mom passed away. The show, by the way, is on a really nice streak of crying it, every day. Oh, yeah. what are we I on love now? it. It's like five or six days now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> At least somebody has to break some tears on this show. <laughs> so it's your turn Let today. Let it be me. It's usually Cassie, but it's my turn. <laughs> Sit down, redhead. I got this. <laughs> so um, last year of October 25th was the day that my mother passed away from my ovarian cancer. And I got to tell you, this whole year has gone by painfully and emotionally quickly which is kind of strange i thought it would go by very slowly and um the holidays are coming up as we all know we've got thanksgiving we got christmas both holidays that she loved especially christmas and so i will say that had it not been for this show it'd been a lot harder to get through the last year because what we do is so much fun we're able to make other people laugh and that is is its medicine of its own laughter for me really is medicine and so i've been able to get through it a lot easier but i gotta tell you going a whole year without without seeing her face and getting her hugs it's been real hard and i know a lot of people like they tell oh what's gonna they think it's gonna get better as time goes by but i remember i mean hearing you talk about your father Kristen, and before my mother passed and i remember thinking to myself well maybe it gets easier as time goes by but until you experience that kind of pain that kind of loss you, you, you don't get it 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 doesn't grief doesn't get easier you get stronger yeah it's it's one of those things um and that the the anniversaries are really really hard Ugh. Um, and like even like the time leading up to it because like the body keeps score right so everything you were going through last year with your mom leading up to her passing you your like your body's reliving it yeah um, and you can actually like you can actually feel it like on a cellular level it's really really weird and messed up so I'm sure this you know leading up to tomorrow which is going to be a heavy day and a hard day you just have to allow yourself to to feel it because there is no other way to get through it. Yeah, and, and I would like to say that because I I tend to use humor as a way to cope with literally everything, whether I'm uncomfortable, sad, mad, whatever. It's just my go-to. And so uh, it's, it, sometimes it feels wrong to let those emotions come out. I feel a little embarrassed and vulnerable because I do not like people seeing me this way. I'm here to tell there's no right or wrong way to grieve, Okay. There's only your way and what you need to do to cope with the loss, okay? And so if that's interjecting some humor, then that's then that's to that's totally fine. And I mean, obviously, you had such a beautiful relationship with your mother. Um, she loved you so much. She she knew you from the inside out that I'm sure she probably appreciates you to, in some capacity, interjecting some humor into it because yeah. <laughs> she wants you to be okay. Yeah. And there is no really being okay when you when you lose somebody super significant. Um, and you're, I'm not the only one to go through this. You're not the only one to go through this. I think what people need to really remember, like there are certain emotions um, that are universal. And unless you have zero connection with any person on this earth, every single one of us will experience grief at some point in time. Oh, yeah. So I feel like like love is universal for the most part and grief is universal for the most part. So hopefully knowing that hopefully knowing that can help but also knowing that it does not get easier which is a hard here the a hard thing to hear but you do get stronger. I'm curious because I didn't have the relationship with my dad, not nearly what you have with your mom. We got very close in the last six months of his life. But even then, like after he passed, like your body and mind, it's kind of so confusing because I remember thinking to myself, even after he passed away, it's like, oh, you know what? I should call my dad today. And yeah. then I'm like, oh. I can't. He's yeah. not around anymore. <laughs> Have you gotten to that point yet? Oh, so many times. Um, for instance, when we went to the Pride Parade, this uh, this was a couple of weeks ago. Um, a year ago, when I came back from the Pride Parade, when we were doing the Barbie thing, that's when she told me that it was cancer and it wasn't good and it was acting fast. So when the Pride Parade came back around, 
I wanted to tell her um, when I got there because the job, the people I used to work for, uh, Kroger, they actually were the float behind us. And I always said that was so funny because that was the job I had before this one. And I wanted to call her and be like, Mom, you won't believe it. Kroger's behind <laughs> me again. And I realized <laughs> I can't call her. Yeah, and it strange. just, the, fun, the funniest things, the smallest things, the biggest things that I would go to her for, I can't. Mm. And I'm trying to do that with my dad, but he's not an emotional guy. Like he loves me and he's there, but it's not the same, mm. you know? And so I've been desperately trying to, I don't want to say find a replacement, but I haven't found that person that I feel like I can just, I, mean, I don't think I will. It's my mom. Sure. Yeah. You know, uh, so. Yeah, you're asking for the impossible, especially <laughs> because it was such a special relationship. I'm sorry for your pain this week. Sorry, Amber. Appreciate you guys. The Bird Show.